Welcome to Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection. She has been inspiring her audiences to fire up their brains and ignite positive changes in their relationships. And now she is here to bring that knowledge to you. The information she shares will help those who hear it to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. When you learn to tap into the potential of your natural gifts and the power of the brain-mind connection, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. Today and every Wednesday on Brain Lady Speaks, you'll explore the latest findings to see how they have practical application in your life. And now, get ready to join Julie Anderson on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. Take it away, Julie. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brain Lady Speaks podcast slash video cast. I am Julie, aka Brain Lady Anderson, and I am very excited to have another wonderful interview here on our show today. And I want to remind everyone to stay on till the end of the program because that's when the really juicy things happen. That's when we're going to tell you the wonderful thing that my guest today has in store for you, as well as all the different ways that you can stay connected with our guest and with us here at Brain Lady Speaks radio show, radio slash podcast show. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful evening, wherever you are listening or watching this program. And we are honored that you are taking the time to spend with us today and to hear from our wonderful uh, guest, Dr. Tanya Painter. 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 I got it. Welcome to the Brain Lady Speak show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, Julie. Absolutely. I'm really, really looking forward to this this interview because uh, as we were talking before we started the recording, uh, our producer is suffering from a headache. I have an old neck injury that causes me headaches. So this is something we're looking forward to, to finding out some more um, holistic with your background in naturopathy, um, some ways to 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 help with that. But let me go ahead and read for our listeners uh, and our watchers your professional bio. So they get a kind of a picture and a feel of of where your background is. Uh, Dr. Tanya Painter graduated from the University of Washington with a bachelor's degree in cellular and molecular biology. That's amazing. And a minor in inorganic chemistry before attending medical school at Vassar University. She graduated in 2012 with her naturopathic medical degree and has been treating women with chronic migraines for almost a decade. And more than that, too, as you'll find out, having suffered from chronic headaches herself for nearly 20 years. So she's speaking from a place of personal experience. She has a God given calling to help women to find a way to manage their migraines more efficiently or effectively, I should say. She is the founder of Migraine (laughs) Both. (laughs) She's the founder of Migraine Mastery, which is a 24 week online program that is designed to significantly reduce migraines and help women to better manage their symptoms so that they can get back to saying yes to life. I love that. I love that. And as we, as I mentioned, you also help with other chronic pains as well. Chronic fatigue, chronic um, digestive issues, uh, depression, anxiety, all of that type of thing. So welcome once again, Dr. Um, Tanya, to the Brain Lady Speaks show. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we migraines are a whole body issue, right? So we see it coming along with depression, anxiety, hormone issues, you know, all of that. So we have to be able to treat all of it in order to effectively see progress with migraines too. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. A lot of people have heard me say this on the show before, but my background, my actually started, I was working towards a bachelor's degree in natural health. And oh. yeah, so I, I was very into, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and I'm like, I don't know why I got interested in it. I like, I was kind of what, what would be considered a health cookie in my teens and just kind of rolled into that. And, and uh, one of the courses in my natural health degree was on psychoneuroimmunology. So that connection between your thought process, your immune system, mm-hmm. the chemistry in your brain, your immune system. And then yeah. that's, di- it diverted me down the brain path. But <laughs> enough about enough about me. Tell me how life works that way. 
<laughs> I know, right? Right? You have some amazing um, background in, in, you know, educational background, but you also have that personal piece of having suffered from, from migraines yourself. So kind of take us through, I always like asking my guests, what led you into this this field that you are working in like what led you into microbiology i mean how amazing is that what was oh, that i i'm such an i'm such a, a science geek i mean that's that's my that's my jam i love it so much and and so i, I always wanted to be a doctor it was always a doctor or something else and, but i always came back to being a doctor and so it just was you know it flowed that i would go and and get to do biology and look through a microscope and learn about all the different organelles in the cells. And I mean, I just love that stuff. And so that's one of the reasons why I focus in on the biochemistry of migraines is because I'm fascinated by all of that intricate work that happens in our cells and how all the chemistry comes together to make us active, like people, you know, human beings that can walk and talk and think. And I just find that fascinating. But when I was 16, I was rear-ended in a car accident, and that kind of triggered my journey with um, chronic headaches and migraines. It started kind of intermittent, um, and then as I got older, probably in my 20s, I started getting them daily, getting daily headaches, and then the migraines started, and then they started becoming more frequently, and some were with aura, and some were without aura, and um, I never was able to really tolerate any of the medications. They made me really goofy. Um, they had bad side effects for me. And so I was just like, okay, well, I guess this is life. You know, I thought it was normal to have headaches every day. I didn't realize that was a, a problem. Um, and so, you know, I would just do whatever I could to try to avoid them. And then if they came, you know, try to take care of myself as best as I could. And Finally, it got to the point where I felt like I was missing out on too much life. I wouldn't go out with friends. You know, I just wanted to go home in a dark room and just sleep for a while. And, you know, when you're in college like that, that really that sucks, you know, I mean, and it doesn't get any better as you get older and all the responsibilities. And so I think that, you know, when I graduated from med school, well, when I went to medical school, I started understanding a lot of the biochemistry that was happening that was contributing to my chronic pain syndrome. Um, and I, you know, I had the rest of it. I had anxiety. I had depression. I had fatigue. I had tremendous joint pain all the time. And um, so I started understanding a lot of what I was doing from a lifestyle standpoint that I could optimize to make myself feel better. And that just kind of started me down a path of, all right, well, now I understand that there are certain neurotransmitter pathways that aren't optimal for me. How do I work on that? And so, you know, I was my own first patient and I really started to understand how you can target these specific issues. Uh, and so when I went into practice and I just, I was a general practice doctor for, um, for a long time. And I would love when people, their main complaint was headaches or migraines. I would just get really excited because those are the people that I was really drawn to because they were at their last resort. I knew what they were going through and I knew how to help them. And that just kind of led me to kind of specialize in it now and, and where I am. And you know you hit on a couple of things that that I think is is really important that you you have that and and I've I've experienced that oddly enough I was rear-ended by a drunk driver when I was 18. <laughs> so you know having that when you have those injuries it's just a lifelong thing and yeah. it does it'll wipe you out for the full day no matter how much you medication you take and then I always find the next day I'm like I call it a drug hangover it's like just this yeah. buzz right and you just can't even focus or think and being, you know, being passionate about the brain, it's kind of like, oh, I hate what I'm doing to my poor brain. No, no. <laughs> so no doubt being a doctor. Now, do you pronounce it naturopathy or naturopathy? Uh, so I usually use the term naturopathic medicine, which is a Natural. little... Yeah, it's a little different nature. There are people who are considered naturopaths who are not doctors. And so there is a distinction. Um, naturopathic medicine is a specific study of medicine where we're kind of focused on the whole body. We've gone through medical school. We are, you know, licensed physicians in most of the states or many of the states anyway. Um, and na naturopathy is more of just that general, like you can go to the herbalist and they practice naturopathy, mm -hmm. right? And so those kind, so it's some technical kind of jargon, but naturopathic but it, medicine is what I say. Naturopathic medicine. It's an important, it, it is an important um, source of distinction or point of distinction, right? Because you, you want to be, especially if you are seeking medical assistance Correct. or something, being able yes. to deal with the that naturopathic medicine with a medical doctor then that's that's might be 
you know, something more that you want to look into for, right. for the background and for the experience. So now you, it's interesting that you mentioned that, that whole body thing. And one of the things that I talk about is the brain lady is I'm always reminding people that everything's connected, right? The neurons in your heart communicate to the brain, the neurons in your gut communicate to the brain and the brain communicates to the gut, you know, and, and, and it is, it's everything is, is together. And so if one portion is out of sync, then everything's out of sync. So right. how do you, what is that whole body approach then that you do specifically when you're talking about helping individuals with these debilitating headaches? Yeah, so there is so much research out there on migraines specifically that is not being utilized in common practice. Um, and so one of the things that we've done is build all of that. Well, not all of it. I'm sure I haven't read through everything, but you know, all of the lifestyle things that we already know about, we know a lot of the dietary things that can be beneficial. We know a lot of the sleep issues. We know that there are cortisol and hormone imbalances. There's, um, there's a ton of research on different lab ranges that you can find kind of that optimal lab range for somebody with migraine. That's different than the, the, the generally recommended recognized lab range. Um, and, and so we can, we use all of that to kind of work on, like everybody works on sleep, diet, hydration, nutrition, nutrient status, all of that. And then once we see where things pan out in some people, that's all they need. They needed the basics. They just needed to kind of learn how to care for their bodies nutritionally and, you know, stress wise. And that's enough. And that's fantastic. In the majority of people that I work with, since they've already tried everything and they've done diets and they've done all the sleep stuff, then we start to look at the more specific individual cases. So one of the things that I say, when you have chronic migraine that is not well controlled by medication, it's usually because you have more than one kind of migraine going on. And what I mean by that is you might have a hormone induced migraine one day and a serotonin induced migraine the next day and a cortisol induced migraine the next day. And so the tryptan will work on one, the serotonin migraine, but not the other two. And so usually it's a matter of kind of unraveling how many different trigger things are going on for you. And then once we narrow that down, we can target those specific pathways for that individual. And that's when we actually really see healing starting to happen in their body. Mm, I love that. I hadn't even thought about that. You know, I, I think about um, from the brain health point of view, the depression and the anxiety disorders and the, the different mental illnesses and how those different neurochemicals and neurochemical pathways affect those, you know, those situations. But I hadn't ever really thought about it from, from a, a migraine point of view. I just, I don't know. I just never thought about it. I was just a bad headache is a bad headache. And I didn't really think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in terms of neurochemistry. And we know so much about how different types of hormones in our body can trigger things, whether it's because we have too much or not enough, sometimes mm -hmm. both. Uh, so, you know, a lot of those different things kind of narrowing it down. And that's why, you know, if it can be so hard to figure out, well, one day I'm triggered by this, but the next day it doesn't do anything to me. So do I have an issue with that? Do I not? I don't know. And that's why it can be so confusing is because we're looking at different types of migraines going on. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the body as a whole, because as you said, certain, certain physical bodies, the makeup of the physical bodies can tolerate certain types of medication and just like diets, some diets, right. you know, some people respond to certain diets better than other diets. And it, it definitely, it affects that. So it makes sense that you would apply that when dealing with, with headaches. So when you talk about these, these imbalances or the root cause, how do you, is there specific, are there specific, so as the listeners, I'm trying to think of this from, from our listeners or those who are watching and they're listening and they're going, okay, well, how do I know what, yeah. what type of migraines I have and which direction I would go? Like, are there symptoms that indicate, okay, maybe this is the serotonin one and this is the dopamine one, or this is, this is the diet based, or, or you know, this is, this is, you need a really good chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, 
there's kind of an art to it a little bit, right? So initially we just have our clients track their migraines and most people have, but it's tracking specific information. So for example, the time of day you get a migraine can give us a lot of information about what's going on in your body. We know that certain neurotransmitters are higher or lower at certain times of the day or night. We know that certain hormones are higher or lower depending on the time of day, um, whether stress triggers you immediately or a couple hours after the stressful event that can give us some information. And so the timing of the migraine around what's going on in your life, how much sleep you got, what you ate, how hydrated you are, the level of stress you have, all of that can give us clues as to some of the major imbalances that are going on. And so just starting to track that and seeing patterns, um, you know, hormones is obviously not going to be a day-to-day -day thing. That's going to be a through the month thing. And then to throw, you know, to throw another wrench in the works, we not only have, you know, an every four week cycle, right, for our periods, but we have a two week cycle for ovulation and our menstruation. And then we also have an eight week cycle because we alternate ovaries every other month, or at least that's supposed to be what happens. And so then we can actually see a migraine related issue happening one month or a hormone migraine happening one month, but not the other. So, you know, that starts to get really nitty gritty. And sometimes that can be hard to figure out. But if you're not looking for those particular patterns, it's really easy to miss because you're not thinking every eight weeks, am I having different changes in my hormones, right? So, so it's really just starting to get familiar with what's going on in your body, how it's, how things are changing, what's triggering you when, and then the other thing that we like to have our clients really do is tell, you know, write down what are their symptoms. So usually every different type of migraine will have different types of symptoms associated with it. And that's going to be different for every person. But you might notice that, you know, sometimes it starts in the back of your eyes, like that, st that sharp stabbing pain. Sometimes that's not there and it actually starts in the back of your neck and kind of radiates up. And then sometimes it's, you know, the, the, uh, it, it comes with an, uh, a ringing in the ears or yawning or, you know, whatever the case may be. If you're not consistent in your symptoms every time, it's most likely because it's a different type of migraine happening. So then you can start to track, all right, when am I having these symptoms? And then you track the different types of symptoms with the different migraines that you're having. And you're starting to be able to pick out, well, every time I eat corn, then, mm. uh, 12 hours later, I get these symptoms and then I get a headache. So then you're starting to see, oh, well, corn is probably a trigger for this particular migraine and on and on we go, right? So we start to really see those patterns emerge, but you have to be looking for them. And that's the tricky part. Yeah. Now you mentioned, you spoke to the female cycle and men have hormone, hormonal cycles as well. Just they aren't as, you know, recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> as 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 women are but do is it statistically speaking do more women suffer from mig migraines than men yeah about 75 percent women 25 percent men so um yes definitely we do uh, and that's thought to be related to hormones not necessarily just being a hormonal migraine but our hormone fluctuations impact our neurochemistry, mm -hmm. our immunology, our, all of it, right? And so those fluctuations definitely play a role in, um, in how susceptible we are to things. That, that makes perfect sense. Do you see in, the, in the, that 25% of the male population, do they, are they ones that have had more of a, I'm curious, <laughs> more of, of hormonal issues themselves? Like, for example, my husband, he doesn't suffer from from migraines, although he did have a period where he had very bad headaches, but that wound up finding out that it was high blood pressure, but mm. he has Hashimoto's disease, right? So mm -hmm. his thyroid is up or down. It, do, it does this whole crazy thing. Do you find that, that things like that are connected in the male population as well? Yeah, I do see a higher correlation of Hashimoto's or thyroid issues in men with migraines than I do in the general male population. Um, and, you know, one, of, one thing that I always like to, to mention, too, is you brought up, you know, hormones in men. We have, you know, the male hormones and the female hormones, right, that have been labeled that way. But what's really underutilized, underlooked at for men with migraine is that progesterone levels, when they're too low, 
even in men, even though progesterone is a female hormone, that, you know, progesterone is a neurosteroid. So it reduces inflammation in the brain. It helps with boosting serotonin levels. It helps with a lot of these things that help kind of keep us stable mood wise and energy wise. And I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody, a man with chronic migraine come in. All we had to do was test their progesterone level. It was in the tank. We do some supplemental progesterone, their migraine goes away. So they can be a very simple fix from a hormonal standpoint, but nobody ever tests progesterone in men. They're only looking at testosterone levels, but they've got testosterone and estrogen and progesterone as well. And that balance is really important for men as it is for women. So if any men are listening, make sure that your doctor is doing a thorough exam of your hormones and doing some testing to make sure that that's not a problem for you. Yeah, yeah, that very good point. I didn't realize that that was the the progesterone was. I I notice it's you know sleep related huge. Which mm -hmm. if if it's low, right? If it's low, then you it, it you have more dis disturbed sleep. Right. So that's it's and then of course not sleeping well contributes to <laughs> yeah, right. It's having, a vicious cycle. Right, having migraines. So obviously getting those hormones in balance and in check is important whether you have two X chromosomes or an XY combination, right? Yes, ma'am. So listening now, if they, if, if someone's listening and going, okay, so I need to start tracking because I'm going to reach out and I'm going to call Dr. Painter, <laughs> but I want to, I want to have all the information that I need to know, or I'm going to take, I want to go talk to my doctor about this, my physician about this, but I want to be able to go in fully so that I, I already have the answers that they, to the questions they may ask, what are some of the things that they would need to watch for, or maybe even something that they may be able to tweak on their own that could be a, I don't want to say a simple fix, but could be an obvious fix that they might be able to do. What are some of the things that a migraine sufferer should, can watch for? Well, so um, one of the things that is very, very missed uh, in in migraine um, in migraine evaluation is sleep apnea. So very, very commonly, uh, I I hear I wake up in the middle of the night with one, or I wake up in the morning with one, and. So my first question is, do you snore? Do you have a history of snoring? Do you wake up feeling hungry for air, or like you're holding your breath? I ask the partner, you know, do you notice that he or she snores? And um, I would say at percent of the time, they say, yes, I snore. Um, and no, I've never been checked for sleep apnea. So when we don't have enough oxygen in our brain, that's a good trigger for inflammation and alkaline, and that's a good trigger for migraine. So a very simple fix can be, you know, just being screened for sleep apnea if you wake with migraines. Now, there are multiple reasons why you would wake for migraines. That's one of them. It can be medication withdrawal. It can be from blood sugar issues. But um, it's something that if you haven't ever dived into that, that'd be something to talk to your doctor about. As far as the things that you want to track, we want to be tracking things like how much sleep are you getting? Um, how well did you sleep? Where you are in your cycle if you're a female? Um, so what your stress level is like, just generally speaking? And then any um, unusual things that are happening out of the ordinary in your life at the moment. So you had a fight with your mom or you know you almost got hit by a car crossing through the intersection. Things that are kind of stand out out of the ordinary that can maybe give you a clue if you end up developing a migraine in the next 24 hours that could you know point to why. And then and then tr just tr trying your best because I know when you don't feel good, you don't want to be writing down why you're not feeling good, how you're not feeling good, but paying attention to the specific pain that you're feeling can be important. You don't want to focus on the pain, but you do want to make notes about it so that you can start comparing, is it the same all the time or is it different? And if it's different, then what's different around when I get this migraine? And then you can start seeing some of the different things coming through. Um, and so that, you know, you don't, I tell our clients, I don't want you spending any more than two to three minutes documenting this every day, right? You shouldn't be writing a journal. We just want to take a little bit of notes. So figure out your shorthand, rate things on a scale of one to 10. And then, you know, I, we have, you know, little cheat sheets where it's sleep, circle the, the number, circle the number, right? So you can make something easy like that, where you're just jotting it down, you're circling any of the symptoms that you have, and then you're just keeping that record. So you can kind of go back and look. 
Yeah, that's very good. And I want to, I just want to um, super support your statements on, on sleep. Um, is it, just the studies that are coming out on brain health and sleep, dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, these really degenerative important. brain diseases. Yes. If you have sleep apnea or you're not getting adequate sleep, your risk goes way, way, way up, way yeah. up. So sleep, I mean, there's a number of, of contributing factors as there are with migraines, right? But pay attention if anybody's listening and you, you're suffering from sleep issues, you're not getting enough sleep, then you really want to do some some investigating things to see if it is sleep apnea or if it's something else that is that is keeping you Low up. Progesterone. Low yeah. progesterone. Exactly. Right. And get that addressed so that you can you can um, it, it, take care of your brain. Yes. <laughs> brain health is so important. I sleep always tell so people. Important. Yeah, I want my brain to last to outlast my body. Like, <laughs> like yes. it's just uh, you. Yeah, I I I love my brain. <laughs> I love, I love my brain, brain too. I know, right? Brains are great. They are when they work right. So, when they work right, exactly, exactly. And they're fascinating when they don't. They're yeah, fascinating. that's true. So there are being because you you take this naturopathic medical path. There's obviously um, there's obviously things that I think the the traditional medical path tends to overlook or tends to band aid. Right, that's one of the biggest things with the with medicine in in general, traditional Western medicine in general. I feel is that they tend to band aid more. They don't always go dive down to to mm -hmm. the source. And what do you see? what do you see that conventional medicine is missing? And then share those with us and how they relate to migraines and what can a sufferer do if they find themselves in that position? So, um, so definitely one of the big things over probably the last 10 years or so that we're really understanding is the connection between gut and brain. And I think that there are some neurologists specifically um, when it comes to migraine, but I think doctors in general are starting to understand how important gut health is. And I'm starting to hear a lot more recommendations for, you know, dietary changes, probiotics, things like that to help with gut health. And I think that's fantastic. But you know, and, and a lot of times I hear people, they come to me and they're like, well, I don't have any food triggers. I don't have any GI issues. And that's great. And maybe you don't have any. In my experience, that's not the case. When there's something going on with a the migraine, there's usually something not quite right with the digestion or the gut health in general. Um, I had somebody come to me and she thought everything was fine. She didn't have any GI issues and come to find out she was only pooping every five days. I'm like, that is oh not gosh. normal. That's not normal. You know, and so it, it might be one of those things where they don't even know it's abnormal because it's just what they've lived with. And so right. really making sure that their gut health is where it needs to be. Um, that's one big thing I think we miss. I think another thing that is that we- gave me a headache. <laughs> I know. I know. When I found that out, I, my reaction was the same as yours. I was like, what? Five days? Okay. Um, yeah. So we got that taken care of for her. And amazingly, she felt so much better when she started going regularly. So, um, but, you know, then there's also genetics. Like there is so much research on genetics and epigenetics and how it's impacting our brain. And we can do things to positively influence how our genes work that will have a positive impact on our, our overall health, but especially with our hormones and our neurotransmitters as they pertain to migraine. And so there's a lot of research on how these genes are affecting um, and there's a very high correlation between mutations in a gene called the MTHFR gene. Um, mm -hmm. Many people have heard of it. Many people haven't. Um, but it, you know, if you haven't and you're interested in about it, you can just Google MTHFR and find out about what it does. It is involved in every single cell in the cellular processes that happen. And so we're looking at it from a genetic level that there's a lot that we can do to support that. And so I think that is a huge piece that is being missed as well. Um, and then the third huge place that I'm seeing is missed is the endocrine piece, right? Hormones, thyroid, adrenals. Um, a lot of times what I hear is, well, my neuro just says that they don't deal with that. I have to go to my gynecologist for the female hormone stuff or the male hormone stuff. Um, well, he's not going to a gy gynecologist, but you know what I'm saying. And then, 
<laughs> I, 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 <laughs> or, um, you know, and then, and then if it's a thyroid issue, then they have to go to the endocrinologist. And so then they've got three doctors who aren't seeing the connection between all of it that's contributing. And so that's part of the disconnect of not looking at the whole body as it interacts, because, you know, the, our, our thyroid Im greatly impacts our hormones and our, um, our adrenal function, which has a huge impact on our migraine. And so that's, that's another big problem is how compartmentalized Western medicine made the body. So then you have the specialties that nobody really talks or understands the connection between the different specialties, especially as it pertains to migraine. So um, as far as what to do about those things, you know, that my first thing is going to be go talk to a functional medicine or naturopathic doctor, right? Someone who understands right. this whole body approach. That's not, I realize that's not always feasible, but having that conversation with your doctor and your doctor should always be learning. If they're not willing to entertain new ideas and look at new research that's coming out, then that's probably not a doctor you want to stay with. I am constantly learning. I love when my clients bring me new research that they found that I didn't see because then there's another piece to the puzzle that I can add into my repertoire, right? So yeah. I would say that I think that self-advocation is super important, especially when you're dealing with chronic pain. And you should have a doctor who is willing to work with you, who listens to you, who doesn't just pass it off as, well, you know, we've tried everything. I don't know what else to do for you. Right. They should be they should be helping you figure this out. That's what their job is. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing wrong with firing a doctor and going to somebody else like you've hired them as a consultant on your health to help you figure things out. And if they're not doing their job, go find somebody who will. Yeah, I love that piece of advice. We I think the the mentality that we tend to be raised with, depending on on who raised you. But in general, the attitude is, you know, you, they're the expert. That's you right. listen to them. If they says. say it's important, right? Nobody ever thinks about firing their doctor. Yeah. Although I can proudly say I fired my pediatrician on my first son on his first visit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who didn't? He didn't want to work with me, and I was like, "Okay, I paid you for this visit. Give him a general health checkup, and I will find somebody else." And we parted ways. <laughs> And I think I, I think he was a, he was a little shocked because you know I was a, I was a new mom and I shouldn't know anything. That's but right. uh, that's a whole nother story. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, yeah. You know the doctors are are there while they're there to help us. They if they're not willing to to listen, right? Then it's then it's and look at alternatives that you may have heard or at least investigate those alternatives with you, try them with you then then it's, it's, yeah, fine. It is definitely, definitely good to look for, for someone else that will support you. Yeah. So this has been a, such an amazing conversation. I'm so enjoying it. And, and I kind of want to ask if you don't mind, how do you see a connection? I can see a connection as the brain lady between the depression and the migraines, but do you see that happen a lot when you have the chronic migraines that it's also connected to things like chronic fatigue and then how does that affect the mental health of the individuals that you treat yeah i definitely see a very high amount of uh, chronic uh chronic migraine associated with anxi anxiety and depression um, and you know, a lot of that comes back down to the neurotransmitter imbalances that are happening. And there are a lot of things that are in common between the depression and, and anxiety. And so we do neurotransmitter testing on our clients to kind of help understand exactly what balance they've got going on or imbalance, I should say. And, you know, a lot of times it comes down to their serotonin levels being all wonky from taking triptans or their body, you know, their genetic makeup is, uh, burning through their serotonin too quickly. That leads them to depression or if they've, you know, built up their tolerance to serotonin over the use of the years with triptans, and then they come back down to a normal level that their body sees that as a deficiency. And then you start feeling more depressed. So there are definitely correlations between our neurotransmitters and all of that. And the same thing with fatigue, right? Our neurotransmitters play a role in our energy production and how our cells are working and the hormones that are being released. And so when we don't have enough of those uppers, those, you know, excitatory neurotransmitters, then we 
feel really draggy and we don't have a lot of energy and our brain fog is horrendous. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we just, we can't get through the day. And, um, and then on top of that, we also see a lot of cortisol depletion in chronic migraineurs. They've been through so many years of pain and, you know, really trauma from the physical pain, if nothing else, that that really kind of drains the adrenal function. And um, when our cortisol levels are super low all the time, we don't have any energy to do anything. Um, and so really doing an investigation into what their cortisol is looking like as well can can really give a lot of information about their migraine, their, you know, um, uh, their fatigue. And it also plays a role in, in our mood, too. Mm -hmm. And that's where wrapping back into all that loop is that gut health too, right? Because 90 90 plus percent of the serotonin production in the body is produced in the gut. Yes. Yes. So if if, if your gut's off, then you're not producing the serotonin and, and yeah, so very, it's, it's all connected. (laughs) It is all connected. It is. It's, it's all connected. So what are, what are your three, give us your, your three top tips for someone who has been suffering with migraines. Maybe it's been, maybe they're just starting, or maybe it's been a while and, and they've been trying to control it, either self-medicating by with over the counter, or they have a doctor that hasn't dove in to do a little bit deeper dive. And they've just given them the typical, you know, migraine medicines. What are, what are your three top tips for them to be able to find relief, not just the physical relief, but the emotional relief, because it's so emotionally draining when you are battling with chronic health issues. Yeah. Yeah. So three, I have to limit it to the top three. Um, Okay. So, (laughs) so first I would say, um, let's take a look at labs. Um, I think that you know, I can't tell you how many times people have said they've had their labs drawn and their labs look fine. And so it's not anything having to do with that. But understanding that there is research has shown us that certain labs are they're different for people with chronic migraine. For example, the thyroid labs, they've done studies that show that a T3, a free T3, which is one of our, it's our active thyroid hormone which by the way, is usually never tested in conventional medicine. So you specifically have to ask for it. Usually they'll just do a TSH. And as long as it's in normal range, then that's, they consider it fine. But your T4 and T3 are the really important ones that we need to measure to take a look at what's going on. And I can't tell you how many times we found normal TSH, normal T4, in the tank T3 and anything below a 2.5 has been shown to be correlated with increased migraine intensity and frequency. Well, a normal range is 2.2, 2.3, somewhere in there. So if you're 2.4 and that's in the normal range of the lab they're using, they're saying you're fine when that could be a huge piece of your migraine picture. So really understanding some of the, the labs and the normal labs for somebody with migraine is really important. And um, not a lot of doctors are aware that there's actually a different range for some of these these numbers. So that's one, is really making sure that the labs are evaluated properly for someone with migraine. Number two, I would say would have to be investigating hormones. Um, When I say hormones, I mean specifically sex hormones and adrenal uh, and cortisol levels. And the problem with that though, is that a lot, most doctors are going to order blood testing and blood testing when we're looking at things from a functional standpoint is not going to give us the information we need because when our when our when we're transporting hormones in our blood they're attached to molecules that will transport it because it doesn't mix in blood well so when we're testing for the hormones we're not necessarily getting all the things that are attached to different molecules different transport things so we're not really getting an accurate picture of what's going on we're just seeing a snapshot what we really want to do for an accurate functional evaluation of hormones is either salivary or urinary testing and so That's going to be usually done through a different type of lab 
that some doctors are willing to look into for you, but most of the time you're going to want to see if you can pursue that through a functional medicine or a naturopathic doctor. And that will really give us an idea of not only your levels, how your body is able to utilize it, but also the ratio between your estrogen and progesterone, which is extremely important in migraine, because we should be having a 200 to one ratio of progesterone to estrogen. And what I typically see in our clients is anywhere from 20 to 50. That is way too much estrogen and way too low on the progesterone levels. Even if their levels come back within normal range, if that ratio is off, they're not balanced. That's mm. not acceptable. And so mm -hmm. that part is always missed because nobody's looking at that ratio. So that's really important. So that would be tip number two. And tip number three has to come back to gut. Um, gut health, you know, as we've talked about, is just so important. We've kind of already covered it. It's not necessarily about diet but it's about eating healthy, making good choices for your body and making sure that the food you're eating are dense with nutrients and not all about convenience, which is super hard to do when you're already not feeling good. Right. And so, yes. <laughs> so really focusing in, and, and one thing that I always like to mention when we're talking about diets, when we look at the migraine population, the one thing that most migraineers can control is what they eat and what will trigger their migraine from a food perspective. And so they limit their diet to the point where we start seeing malnutrition and, and a lack of nutrients because they're so restricted. I, I like to encourage everybody to come from a different place, right? We don't want to restrict our body from food. We want to eliminate or avoid inflammatory foods, but there is so much anti-inflammatory foods available to us. We just have to learn it. And under like TEF, one of my favorite um, grains in the world is TEF and nobody has ever heard of it. I didn't hear about it until about 15 years ago, but it is- I feel like my horses- yeah. I mean, it is so nutrient dense. It's really delicious. It's got this beautiful, dark, nutty flavor. Um, you can make it for like oatmeal-ish kind of, you know, texture for breakfast. You can make it as a side at dinner. Um, but nobody's ever heard of it. So, I mean, there's just so many things, especially with Amazon and, you know, delivery options that we have access to more types of foods than we ever did before. So really encouraging people to step out of that you know, this is kind of what we eat in America and starting to look at some of the grains and the other things that we have available to us that are maybe not common here that are super dense in nutrition. Um, and then just really starting to open up our diet to those things while we're avoiding the other stuff, right? Not just the restriction. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how, how all of that is so connected within the body and how different each body is. So that goes yep. back to that kind of tracking different things, you know, what did I eat yesterday? Yeah. How, did it, how did it affect me? Well, this has been a, such a great conversation and a lot of what you're talking about, of course, I think would apply to a lot of different, um, as you said, pains, chronic issues within the body. Now you have something, this is the juicy part that uh, I always tell people to hang on to. You have a, you have a guide of five things that every chronic migrainer should know. And yeah. tell us how we can get that, how they can get that. Yeah. So you can go on our website at migrainemastery.org. We have it as a free download available. Um, but yeah, here's the link here. And it basically is just kind of a little mini ebook that I put together that has the top five things. So you asked for my top three, um, but the top five things for us to kind of look at to make sure that your doctor has evaluated for you and has evaluated correctly so that you can kind of rule things in, rule it out um, and really help you to kind of hone in on some of those those things that is not really commonly investigated, or if it is investigated, is not really properly investigated with a lot of doctors. I love that. I love that. And be your be your own best advocate. And if you aren't yes. your own best yeah. advocate, then bring a nice, strong personality with you to help, <laughs> help right. with that. Yeah. Especially if you can yeah, if you get stressed out at the thought, um, you know, and you shut down in that office, having, you know, having somebody there is, is very, is, can be yes. very beneficial. Well, there's lots of ways. Now I have to ask you, so you're based in Spokane, Washington. Mm -hmm. What if, um, what if you, somebody's like, oh man, I really want to, oh, you have a, that's right. You have a lab guide as well. Sorry. It's popped up here. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I do. So we talked about the importance of improper lab interpretation. I forgot that I was offering that as well. So yes, don't let them both. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. Um, so uh, not everybody lives there, obviously. So somebody's right. watching this or listening to this and going, I loved the things that she had to say. I would love to work with her. Or uh, what, what would you, are the, do you do virtual consultations? Do you, you, you are. Good. Yeah. Yes. Actually, we're uh, we're only online at this point. We don't have an in-person uh, office. We're just doing our group program with our clients. Uh, and then we also have our one to one clients that we do. So um, to really help help people dig deeper, you can be nation. We, we serve people nationwide. In fact, most of our clients are all East Coast, Tennessee, New Jersey, Florida, um, New York. So a lot of migraines over there. <laughs> a lot of over there. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So now if you want to get in touch with her, you can um, go on Facebook. She is Tanya, Tanya Painter, MD, ND, ND. ND. Yep. Yeah. Um, she has a Facebook group. So if that's something, if you're not kind of sure if you want to call for a consultation, you can possibly join that group and be yeah. connected with her there. Talk us for a while. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. It's a great way to do it. Social media lets you let you really get a good, right. good, good clue on what people are like. And you can, of course, go there to um, you have a YouTube channel that Migraine yep. Mastery, a, okay, a migraine that. free life. Yeah. Migraine, migraine Mastery, free a migraine free life. There should be a hyphen in there. That's OK. Um, I'm trying to read it without my glasses. And, <laughs> and it's all smushed together. Oh, yeah, you can basically anywhere you go, you can just Google migraine mastery and, you know, our, our groups will pop up. Everything is migraine mastery something. Right. So uh, but with you, our YouTube, I shoot about, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 minute videos, kind of going a little bit more in depth in a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and, you know, how to properly track symptoms and what seasonal allergies have to do with, uh, you know, with um, migraines and how depression plays a role in migraines and, you know, all that kind of stuff so that you can really kind of get a better sense of. Some of these things that aren't really commonly looked at or even understood is how it's playing a role in the migraine syndrome. So uh, a lot of people like to like those videos. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, Dr. Tanya, thank you so much for being uh, Dr. Tanya Painter. Sorry, Dr. Painter. <laughs> Dr. Tanya, I go by Dr. P, whatever. Dr. P. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the Brain Lady Speak show today. This was a, it was a very um, valuable content. Sometimes what I do is just super interesting. And this was interesting as, as well as very valuable to be able to have this conversation. And I hope that we're able to reach to a lot, a lot of individuals. So I encourage everyone to connect with you and follow you. Um, I know I will. I know I will. Well, thank you so much. It's been wonderful being on. I've enjoyed our conversation as well. Absolutely. And you can reach out to her on any of the social medias, or you can always shoot her an email at support at migrainemastery.org. All right. So you now you know how to stay connected with our guest. Also stay connected with me. I am um, at Brain Lady on Twitter, Brain Lady Julie LinkedIn, Brain Lady Julie on Instagram. I am Purple Brain Lady on uh, Facebook. We have a um, train your brain uh, understanding, master your brain personality connection group on Facebook that we'd love to have you a part of if you've taken the brain personality assessment. If you haven't taken the brain personality assessment, I encourage you to go do that. That is a real foundation to get out there and live your best life and take care of your brain and love your brain like we do. <laughs> and until next time, oh, if this is great information, if you enjoyed it, please give us some social love. Uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, this is obviously, I, I, I don't think anyone doesn't know someone who suffers from one of the chronics, right? Chronic fatigue, chronic pain, chronic um, migraines, you know, it's, it's there and it's all connected. So it's valuable information that we covered today. I think there are definitely some points that every person can take away and apply in their life. And it's those little tweaks, those little adjustments that you make from day to day that can really help you to enjoy your life and have a healthier mental attitude as well. So once again, thank you, Dr. P for being on the show. And I want everyone, we are honored 
that you took the time to listen and watch us today. And as I like ending all of my programs, I want everybody just kind of roll their shoulders back, shake it off, take a nice deep breath, go out there and simply enjoy every moment.